Hippogriffs and You, a lecture on interspecies safety. Hippogriff Safety 101. Silverstream stood patiently in the front of the classroom, eyes scanning over the gathered crowd of human children and pony foals filing into the room and taking a seat upon the plush carpet in front of her. The children were far cuter than they had any right to be, their faces filled with awe and eyes brimming with curiosity at meeting a new and comparatively exotic creature. She loved children, and took a great deal of willpower to keep from fidgeting in excitement. However, her niece Tidepool was much less enthusiastic about the crowd, what with preferring to hide behind the thick curtain of her aunt's mane and the height of her withers. Scanning the room one last time to make sure everyone was situated and attentive, Silverstream swiveled her head behind her and gently bit down upon the scruff of her niece. Pulling the nervous fledgling away from her concealed roost, she set them down between her forelegs and sat back on her haunches. Greetings, every creature! So, first things first, my name is Silverstream, and this is my niece Tidepool. We're here to teach you all about how to safely interact with us hippogriffs. So, do we have any questions before we start? A few seconds of silence ensued before a single hand shot up from the crowd. Yes, uh, you there. What would you like to ask? Silverstream inquired, pointing out to the child. Um, do you want to be called Mrs. or Doctor? My mother gets upset about that. The human boy answered. And what's your name? Jeremy. Well, Jeremy, you can just call me Silverstream. Are there any other questions? No? Well then, let's get started. Giving Tidepool a gentle pat on her back, Silverstream bent down to whisper into her ear. You're doing good. Just let me know if you're getting too nervous, okay? Mm -hmm. Tidepool nodded, their heads shaking just a bit from all the eyes fixated on them. For our first point on hippogriff safety, never ever put your hands, hooves, or other appendages near a hippogriff's beak. Our beaks are designed to catch and eat fish, so they're very sharp and can cut you really bad if you're not too careful. Silverstream emphasized the words by craning her neck back and displaying the wicked hook of her beak. Out of the corner of her eye, she could see Tidepool beneath her mimicking the motion. The crowd was mostly enraptured, although Silverstream did spy a few kids who were a bit put off by her raptorial beak. Clearing her throat, the hippogriff continued. This is especially true around really young hippogriffs. Since we hatch from eggs, our chicks have an instinct to nip at anything that comes near their face. It's like how baby birds open their mouths whenever their parents are at the nest. Usually, they'll just give you a bruise, but some are strong enough to pierce your skin, or worse. I did that when I was younger. I accidentally bit on Silverstream's wings when I was a fledgling, it's still a bit embarrassing. Tidepool murmured, hiding her face behind her wings as she scooted between her aunt's forelimbs. Oh yeah, Tidepool was quite the biter when she was young. I still have a scar on my wingtip from when that happened. So just make sure that you don't put your hands or other appendages near Hippogriff's beak, because it can be very painful if you don't follow that rule. Silverstream took a moment to clear her throat before continuing. Since this is a mixed classroom, these next few points are probably known by the humans in the class. And those are that you should never try to ride a hippogriff without their permission. Nor should you startle or make a hippogriff feel unsafe while you're behind them. Much like the ponies here in the classroom, we hippogriffs can get scared when some pony crawls on our back without our knowledge. If you get bucked off when we're scared, you could seriously get hurt. Especially if you try to climb on an adult hippogriff, because we can fling you quite hard. Also, like ponies, we instinctively buck our hind legs at threats behind us. If you sneak up from behind and spook us, you can end up breaking bones, or worse, if we hit you in the right way. If you're ever approaching one of us from behind, just give us a sign that you're there before you get too close. So, any questions before we move on to our final segment? This time, another human hand shot upwards, this one belonging to a young girl. I'm Avalyn, and can we ride a hippogriff while they fly? I've always wanted to fly. Silverstream's heart melted at the sweetness in the girl's voice. Well, Evelyn, the answer is yes! The hippogriff will need a safety harness for you to ride on, and they'll have to pass the test to allow for riders. But if you do find a hippogriff that's passed the test, has riding gear, and you have a parent or guardian with you, you can ride a hippogriff. Awesome! Thank you, Silverstream! No problem, Evelyn. So, does anybody else have anything to ask before we move on to our final section? After a few brief moments of silence, Silverstream wetted her tongue and continued speaking. Lastly, it's very important to be careful around a hippogriff's front legs. As you can see from me and Tidepool, we have some really sharp claws there. She explained, as she lifted a limb for emphasis. This is likely familiar to the ponies here in the room. If you bump into our forelegs, we might reflexively kick back at you, which can result in you getting cut really badly in the worst case scenarios. It's bad enough that you'll have to go to the hospital and have scars for the rest of your life, so please, please, don't go for around any of our legs. Glancing over at the clock, a jolt of panic raced through her mind. Oh shoot, we're running out of time here. Okay, so we'll just touch up on two more things and we'll be done. 
First, don't go touching a hippogriff's wings without their consent. That's a big no-no, as the pegasi in the class can attest. And lastly, if a hippogriff bouts their head before you, that means that we trust you, and this spans all across hippogriff cultures. Now that's all the time that we have for today, but I'll be back next Wednesday along with a whole bunch of other species when the safety fair starts. I hope to see you all then! I don't know why, but I love stories that integrate human society with equestrian society. To me, there's just so much potential with it, and it's hard to resist. Anyways, let's get on to our very safe donators. Top donators, TacoCat598, Peter Coltard, Jason Man, Darkside, Ponyman, and Gauntlet. Zar630, Strix, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Drake Love Dragon, Dospo, Madman Stan, Delta Omega, Jack Cage, Runescythe9852, Hunter Norman, Dash of Evergreen, Rhiny Dragonwolf, Tal Rasha, The Toilet Snake, Sword Brother and Mordred, Ron and Wandering, Random Person Man Guy, Easy, Skyochia, Leslie Prickett, Jordan Peterson, Crimson Kids and A9, Lightskin, Monster Kitty, Tim Bob, Starlight Glimmer, Lightning Blitz, Squiddy Boy, David D. Sanchez, Soul Dragon, Dragon, Gaggy, Trey, Shadow Drake, Joe Piercy, Hunter Mara, Alex F, Rainbow Dash, Teal Anderson, TV Killer, John Becker, Leon Reynolds, Raven Speedster, Zach Rakao, Mystery CU, Edgar Garcia, One Kingdom One, Nissa Rusan, Vazuri, Dyslexic Character Sheets, Just a Random Boy, Hodrick Plinkart, A Crazy Person, Ponyman365, Neapolitan, Six of Nine, Shyfire, Stamp, and Dion Baseri. Thank you all very much for watching this video, live life to the fullest, and hopefully I'll be able to move somewhere where it's much quieter.